their uh, compute platform let it be a laptop or let it be a pc or something like that okay so this is what it is versus if you take an soc it is completely different as you can understand so let's pick uh, let's put a diagram like let's assume this is an soc uh, essentially it is an entire system on chip it is going to include the cpu sometimes it may include even ram and other stuff okay so that's what is an soc it's an entire uh you know system on a chip so that is going to include the cpu as well of course and apart from that it is going to internally have some type of a bus and directly an soc always if you notice uh, soc will expose uh, an ethernet port here it will be some ethernet port ports or single port or multiple ports and it may expose some usb ports some kind of usb ports okay and it may also have this uh, sound uh, output and other stuff sometimes even the sound uh, card is inbuilt into the uh, soc itself versus you can see uh, how a cpu is okay see in a cpu you may have a nic card so you can connect a nic card to that pcie and uh, this can be a nic card right so this can be a network interface card this can be a nic card this can be an USB ports. This can be your uh, some sound card or a video card, whatever it is. So like this it is. Here we are attaching externally versus on an SOC. It is a part of it, and right out of that SOC you get this, you know, directly ports, and those ports are populated. So if I pick this, you know, Raspberry Pi, whatever is lying in my desk. See if I pick this, so essentially this is what is happening, okay, yep, you can see here this is the main uh, processor and after that you have some other uh, extra processor near to this USB maybe that is that uh, you know USB chip or whatever, after that you have all these ports, you have this, uh, you can see here Ethernet port, the Ethernet port is somehow connected to the main processor and then you have all this GPIO pins and also you have this camera input and HDMI, everything is connected to that uh, you know SOC, so that is what happens in an SOC, so in a way if you buy any cheap uh, routers in Amazon, so let's go here and uh, let's click uh, Wi-Fi router. So if you buy any home based router like this in Amazon, technically all these are SOC chips, these are tiny embedded uh, devices. So uh, the fast path is going to happen in the processor which is nothing but SOC and it is going to happen in the operating system which is nothing but a stripped down custom linux uh, you know open wrt whatever they customize and put onto this device so that's what it happens so in this case uh, whatever you buy here it is not a network processor instead it is just a simple generic soc okay so which is what is the main uh, thing I thought of covering in this video is not to get confused an SOC is not uh, one among these this is not a network processor and even if you buy any uh, uh, you know any uh, routers like this generally these are not SOCs I mean sorry generally these are not a network processors or although it is being used in a networking device these are uh, you know small soc devices and it can be used to make this uh, routers or whatever it is so that's what versus if you consider uh, a networking uh, a network processor it is completely different so let us put some type of network processor okay let us put some type of network processor let's assume this is our network processor uh, network okay processor See, uh, the name itself says it is a dedicated network processor. This is not any SOC. This is not even a CPU itself. Okay, so it is a dedicated device. So it is going to have some network ports uh, like one can understand. So it is going to have definitely this Ethernet ports and these Ethernet ports will be directly connected to this uh, network processor. And you don't need any bus like this PCIe and other stuff. So you don't need any logic like that okay so you have the processor and then you have all these ports directly connected and um, what happens is it can do directly routing or switching but it needs some operating system or something to control that 
you know uh, the entire network processor operation so sometimes they may have a small soc additional to this processor so you may have a small soc here uh, you know soc which is uh, uh, going to have the operating system and all that stuff the regular linux stuff and that soc will be connected to this network processor and this is what i was discussing in the previous uh, episode about this data plane and control plane so somehow this soc will be connected to that network processor so in a way this is how it will be linked and uh, this soc will have like i mentioned this is going to have the regular uh, linux and uh, the entire operating system uh, which is linux whatever it is okay or any proprietary uh, linux uh, image whatever they built so that is going to run on this soc device and this soc device with some drivers it is going to control that network processor and it is going to handle the data plane path or the fast uh, path in that network processor okay so whatever the service packets are coming will come and leave over here so this is going to be your fast path so this is going to be your fast path versus if there is any control uh, packets and moreover you should understand this soc may have an ethernet port this may have any ethernet ports one or multiple ports ethernet ports so this may have ethernet ports and these are also ethernet ports so the difference is these ethernet ports are meant to handle this fast path versus this ethernet port is a control port where you manage the device it is meant for management port you can assign an ip address to this port you can assign an ip address to this port uh, i'm sorry <laughs> Uh, you can assign an ip address to this port and you can manage this uh, router or whatever or a network switch versus these fast path ports may have an ip in case if it is a routing device or some firewall or something or if it is uh, a network switch a manageable switch they may not have any ip address so, so they are just uh, ethernet ports without any ip address associated with each port so that's what it is so that's the thing so don't get confused when you buy any network appliance it may have a management management port which means it is connected to some kind of soc that soc is what is going to run the entire uh, linux operating system and that linux operating system may have some drivers uh, to control that network uh, processor to handle the fast path data so you can see here this is to handle the fast path this is to handle any control and uh, slow path you know uh, data actually so this is to handle any control data which is nothing but slow path okay so that's what it is so this is how it is linked and um, uh, i don't want to go much in depth in this episode about network processors because i just need to give that overview about what constitutes this uh, network processors and what it distinguishes or differentiates a network processor versus an soc and as well a regular uh, generic compute platform so let us summarize a generic platform as you can see it's a strictly a cpu alone uh, the cpu may have bus and it may have all this uh, ram interconnects so you put the memory it is going to interconnect with the ram apart from that it has this pci bus to that bus you have all the sata ports all that uh, nvme stuff and usb nic cards everything attached to the pci bus and through that it is linked to the you know cpu on a regular uh, generic compute platform like your laptop pc server whatever next is our socs the socs are an entire system built on a chip the best example is this uh, raspberry pi as you can see here the processor includes the entire soc so right out of the processor most of the times you get all that uh, connects uh, you know interconnects so the hdmi is directly connected to the processor which is not going to be the case in a generic cpu because you need a video card and uh, either it is uh, built in the motherboard or whatever it is however there are exceptions there are uh, as you know there are uh, certain ryzen uh, cpus uh, and as well as amd apus and atom chips intel atom chips and including this laptop okay see this is a old dell laptop 
this is a processor 4500U. Uh, it's an i7 or i5-4500U processor. This uh, processor has a inbuilt VGA card. So, whatever the VGA ports they have exposed and as well as the screen, whatever it is getting, it is directly getting from the processor. So, it has an inbuilt VGA card. So, it's, it's just an exception, okay. In this case, it doesn't need an external uh, video card it has an inbuilt uh, intel's uh, uh, video card versus this laptop has an nvidia card it has a separate nvidia processor along with that uh, i mean a gpu processor along with the core uh, intel uh, processor this is an i7 uh, 4700 uh, uh, mq processor i believe so here in this case it is quite different versus if you think of any socs usually it's an entire system on chip there is no separate uh, ethernet uh, controller nothing like that most probably all of them are baked into the cpu but this doesn't going to make this does not going to make a network processor because this is still a generic compute platform the exception is all these other peripherals are now built into the processor itself so it's an entire system on chip versus a network processor is going to handle the fast path packets it's going to have a dedicated task either it can do routing it can do firewall uh, which means it is also a router most firewalls are nothing but routers plus it can do that uh, packet monitoring and uh, filtering stuff or it can be a network switch, a layer to network switch. To control all that, sometimes optionally you may have an SOC. The SOC is going to have the operating system. And so the control plane is in that operating system uh, layer, the software layer. The data plane is the fast path. The fast path will be handled by the network processor. And to make this network processor, sometimes you can have a dedicated uh, network processor. Sometimes you may need to get a generic FPGA, program it to perform like a network processor. And then you have a network processor. <laughs> okay. So hope this gives that entire uh, big picture. I may shoot a couple of more episodes uh, in the future on uh, network processors. Uh, so in case if this is useful, uh, you know, post your uh, 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 queries in uh, YouTube comments. If you have any further queries, uh, post in YouTube comments or be in touch via mail. So hope you like this video. Thanks a lot for watching the same. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.